I did push-ups, pull-ups, and dips for six months relentlessly. Did I get stronger? Yes. Did I magically unlock the front lever? Not even close. The strength you need to be able to do pull-ups and push-ups is directly related to the strength you need to do some skills. Actually, every single skill in calisthenics. However, I quickly learned that simply being good at pull-ups does not mean you can do the front lever, but it definitely helped. I was able to learn it in about a month once I started doing this. I know it's not realistic to say everyone can learn the front lever in a month, but if you have even the most basic foundation in calisthenics, a lot of you guys can learn it in less than 100 days, if you train the right way. Here are the most basic requirements. The front lever is a pulling skill, so it is directly related to pulling exercises. And that means pull-ups, rows, and leg raises. And the core is very important for everything. If you can do 10 pull-ups, you're at a good place, but you can work up from being able to do five to eight pull-ups. You have to be able to do at least 10 to 15 rows for three sets. And of course, have decent core strength, which we're going to measure with leg raises. Five to eight leg raises, or about 10 to 15 knee raises. For leg raises, you want to focus on keeping your shoulders down and relaxed and lift your legs up and control movements. This type of movement is necessary to help you lift your legs up into the right position. If you're a complete beginner and can even do a single pull-up, you can follow my guide on how to build your foundation of strength. Now let's get into the progressions. The very first step you guys want to be focusing on is the tuck front lever. If you can't do a basic tuck front lever, you should be strengthening and working on your rows. Three sets of 15 rows is the basic minimum requirement. If you can do this for three sets in a row, you should be good and ready to do the tuck front lever. For the proper form cues, you want to go up, pull yourself up to the chest, and then come down in control movements. Now let's get into the tuck front lever. Similar to the rows, you want to keep your lats engaged. You want to visualize almost pulling the bar down with your back. So if you're in this position, instead of letting loose and dropping down to the ground, you want to pull with your back. From here, you're basically going up like this. You have to stay in this progression until you can do it for at least 15 to 20 seconds. I'm not just saying these numbers because it's the perfect number to hit. 15 to 20 seconds is going to ensure that your back is strong enough and your lats are conditioned enough to move on to the harder progressions. As you know, any static skill, especially the planche and front lever, put very high loads on your joints and this one especially, your muscles. Now to strengthen your holds even more, once you get to about the 10 second mark, you want to incorporate front lever pull-ups. For this progression, even though you might not have the best range of motion, this is what it's going to look like. Again, you're not just going to be pulling yourself up and letting yourself drop down. You want to control every single movement. And when you do your sets, you can start off with the max hold and then move on to the front lever pull-ups. You want to add in a little bit more variety in your training. You should be training different movements. Now, if you can do this for about 8 to 10 reps, you should have no problem moving on to this next progression. Advanced tuck front lever. Advanced tuck is basically just like the tuck front lever, except you're extending your legs slightly further away from your body. And once you extend your legs, you can see that your butt naturally moves up a little bit higher. And if you can do all the previous progressions, you should have no problem achieving a 10 second advanced tuck front lever hold. Now, one thing that I don't see a lot of people utilizing is the in-between progressions. There will come a point where you can't do the next progression, but the previous progression is a little easier for you. And that's when you want to introduce in-between progressions. From tuck front lever to advanced tuck front lever, it's gonna look something like this. Here you have the tuck front lever. Instead of extending fully into advanced tuck front lever, you want to only extend one leg and hold this as long as possible. And then in no time, you'll be able to slowly extend up and go into advanced tuck front lever. This is only to help you bridge that gap between tuck front lever and advanced tuck front lever. And if you focus more on these types of progressions, you can advance in your front lever journey very quickly. From this point on, you're going to be staying in the in-between progressions longer than the actual progressions because the further we extend our legs and decrease the leverage, the harder the skill is gonna get. And it only gets progressively harder. Just to give you a visual representative of this, this is a higher leverage because your hands are in a 90 degree angle. And as you extend your legs further away from your body, the leverage decreases. Now you have a shorter angle. In tuck front lever, your hands are at about this level right here. And then as you extend your legs, the leverage slowly decreases. So for example, if you were to add weight to this movement, your hands will go even further because there is more weight on that side of the body. Now the next progression from here is the straddle front lever but this is where a lot of people tend to get stuck because from advanced tuck front lever to straddle front lever is a very big jump. So I'm going to introduce probably one of the best in-between progressions, the frog front lever. And if you've ever seen or done the frog stand, it's going to look pretty much exactly the same 
except you're in front lever position. Instead of fully going into straddle, you're going to increase the leverage and just hold as well as possible. You should be feeling your legs engaging the entire time and maybe even your triceps. If you're not feeling your legs or if your body alignment is not straight, it might not be because your core is not strong enough, but because you're not engaging your back or that you need to strengthen your legs a little bit more. The core essentially helps you lift your legs up into the position and hold it there. And the back is responsible for holding everything together. And the same thing with the other progressions. At this point, you want to double down on doing the front lever pull-ups. Now I'm going to show you an even better exercise to help you bridge that gap and help you strengthen your front lever. This single exercise helped me go from straddle front lever to full front lever in about a couple of weeks. And that is front lever raises. Now, I only started doing this after I already achieved the straddle front lever, but you can do this with every single progression and watch how fast you can skyrocket your progress. You want to lift your legs up in a controlled movement, as controlled as you possibly can, and you can stop in the middle. But in this case, it might be better to go all the way up and then lower down to the middle point where the stress is at its highest and then lower down. It might be a little bit harder to control at first, but as you get stronger and stronger, consciously slow down your reps and control the movement all the way down and then go back up. When you do this, your whole time is typically gonna be longer and it's gonna help your body get used to being in that front lever position. Something even better that you can do. And now this is how you're gonna bridge that gap between strider front lever to full front lever. When you lift yourself up all the way in the strider position, you can put your legs together and then slowly lower down in a full front lever position. When I first did this, it felt surprisingly easy and I was completely shocked at how easy it was to lift my legs up, lower down in the full front lever position. And form here is very important because you're gonna be training your body to be in the correct position. And then in no time, you'll be able to do this. And then for some people still, that bridge between the straddle front lever and the full front lever might be too much for them to handle. And that's where you can introduce the single leg front lever. And this is where I stayed at the longest in my front lever journey because I was strong enough to hold the front lever, but I couldn't hold it long enough to be able to train with it effectively. So I would focus the bulk of my workouts, my reps and sets in this position. For some people, doing a straddle front lever is a little bit harder than doing a single leg front lever. And this is where you have to experiment and test yourself a little bit. Because if that's you, then you want to drill the single front lever way more than you do the straddle front lever. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these types of videos and if you think I miss anything, comment down below. Please give a like if you found this useful. I'ma give all of my people a portion to build them a fortune on flipping the bra. I can't be mixy when iffy the vibe and 40 on 50 is really the time. Why is you all on my phone like you want me? Like you wasn't pushing the kick to the side. I don't know if you I'm going to show you the importance of consistency. I made more progress in a year and a half than I did in four years. Does that mean the other four years was a waste of time? No. Would I have made more progress if I was consistent throughout? Absolutely. After 500 days of calisthenics. 